It's the mat work. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your man Corey, and today I am back with another Brand Man Network exclusive. Now, this particular video from the network touches on marketing controversy and how you can use it as an effective tool to get your music, you, your visuals, or whatever out there. We all know that everyone loves a good controversy. We love being for things, we love being against things, we love telling people that we're for or against these things. And when used correctly, controversy really can carry you far and, like I said, become an effective marketing tool so let's dive right into those things it's the network oh, what's up brand man network it's sean and i'm back with another exclusive so this series right here is the controversy series still and we've already learned about the fact that there's certain levels of controversy we talked about certain subjects when it comes to controversy and how you even pick but there's this last thing which is the connection and the connection is once you get that emotional connection that's one thing that people constantly um, think about like how do i drive dig in and make sure people connect they feel this thing because once you connect emotionally you want to have the battle but there's this huge part that people miss when it comes to controversy and that is you have to get this other connection you have to get both sides emotionally evolved and to engage with each other how do you do that? First, let's go do a little background. We can start with Beyonce. If you've ever seen Beyonce's Super Bowl performance, that was the one when she was with Bruno Mars and Coldplay. She came out and she was actually dressed in like Black Panther type gear. And Beyonce was actually wearing Black Panther um, uniforms. It alluded to the Black Panthers. But the thing about this is it didn't create any kind of controversy at first. None at all. This is what happens essentially. You have some people watching and they're like, yo, she's kind of, you know, throwing big ups to the Black Panthers. I rock with her. And then you have another side who literally they are from that old school and they're like, yo, like the Black Panthers. I don't rock with the Black Panthers. There's controversy around them because there's this false narrative that they're like a hate group against white people. They are not. But that's how some older white people feel. And, and that false narrative made them say, yo, we don't rock with this performance. I can't believe you, Beyonce, for doing this, and even bigger, the Super Bowl, the NFL, for allowing this to happen. And then in the middle, you have this bigger group of people who literally don't know about the Black Panthers at all. Um, and then there's other levels of the people who know about them, but they're not in tune, probably younger, to the extent where they'd actually see something and then it'll click and they're feeling any type of way about it at all. So it's not into the point that those people who are negatively feeling the way they did about the Black Panthers start to create an uproar. Because even the people who noticed it and saw it, they're just like, yo, hey, that's love. I like this. And they've got more brain equity with Beyonce for it, but they don't create an uproar. It wasn't until the people who were displeased with the fact that that ever happened and were hating on the fact that Beyonce had the Black Panther uniform that everything started to happen. The ball started to get rolling because the narrative before that was, the, was this is like one of the best Super Bowl performances of all time, especially in the last 10 years. So once those people created that uproar, now you have this other side where people are like, yo, they're hating, they're mad, now we love Beyonce even more and now we're gonna engage with these people because these people are being racist and then these people over here are like, oh, y'all are racist and these are a hate group. You're starting to create disengagement, right? It's just a back, back and forth. And funny enough, that same thing actually happened to me when I was younger I was in high school and you know Sean John was still like popping at the time and I was at Macy's doing my back to school shopping and I saw this shirt that was like $6.99 I was like yo $6.99 for some Sean John I'm gonna get this shirt got the shirt wore to school one day and it had this fist on it right and that's something that doesn't connect with me in any way heavily you know if anything okay black power or just pride that's the only thing I would associate it with coming up and then I'm walking through school boop de boop throughout the whole day and then near the end of the day this teacher sees me it's a white teacher an older white teacher and she's like why are you wearing that shirt who gave you that shirt why are you wearing that shirt and she's making all these connections with like the black panthers and she sees them as a hate group I didn't know this at the time. I'm just thinking like, you know, I liked it. Like, what's, what's the big deal? I have zero association with any of that type of stuff, at least as a first thought to my mind. I found this out later, but 
here that's the perfect example that throughout the whole day none of these people who connected with it most of those people who are in the middle or just unaware of certain things actually had anything to say about it it didn't register in the same way it didn't register for me but then once somebody who had the uproar engaged that's when you started to see energy around it and it became a whole incident so that's why you have to make sure both sides get connected and engaged this is how you do it Number one, it sounds counterintuitive, but you can market the message that's going to be controversial directly to the people who are going to disagree with you. I know it sounds weird, but remember, you need these people to start an uproar just for the people who are on your side to really get involved. Because just like a battery, you need the positive and negative for this thing to have energy. You don't have a true controversy if there aren't both sides existing. I've literally been with an artist and he's had a certain brand that he was building that was gonna make a certain group of women feel a certain type of way. And I was like, yo, bro, like you need to make sure they see it. Get articles placed in the places that they actually congregate because they're gonna create a lot of the uproar and message. That's one thing that you can definitely do. And that's a part of creating controversy. The opposed side has to see it because as we know, a lot of times the haters are the loudest people. But another way to do it is, yes, you can market it directly to the people that you want on your side who, or who will be on your side, but you need to do it in a way where they're aware of opposition. Because look at it this way. If you're saying a message to an audience that agrees with that message, they're just going to love you for it or say, you know, yo, I appreciate you. I respect that. I love that you feel the way I feel. And they're going to keep going about their day. If anything, they might, you know, share a little bit here or there like, but mostly you're just going to get brand, brand equity with them. They're going to like you more. But if you share a message that this opposition exists about this thing that you're doing that they agree with, then they're going to be emotionally engaged. Let's just say gay rights, for example, and there's a, a state that's approving gay marriage and there's going to be this whole you know, day that they do it. Big news. Cool. If I take articles about the fact that there's all these groups of people that are being outraged by the fact that gay marriage is about to be approved in this state, and then I market those articles to the people that approve of gay marriage, those people who approve of gay marriage will be outraged. And then they'll start saying, ah, see, this is why such and such, and this is why we need to like just change the way this country thinks. They'll be emotionally engaged because they're aware of the opposition. Sometimes that opposition is just what brings <laughs> out the energy in us so of course in that same way that the opposition could be marketed to and create that energy you can start with your people but they need to be aware that the other thing is happening there are some ways we can do this and we're going to do a workshop I decided to actually help you create and find your own type of controversy um, content or just message in general because it could just be a narrative that you put out there because the truth is which you're probably aware of if you've seen one of my other videos on controversy is it doesn't have to actually be something that's so you know emotionally taxing like racism or or human rights and things like that there's so many other versions of controversy that exist that you can play off of and just know that the best thing that you can do is create controversy that you agree with it's something that you already believe right or that's already in line with your brand but you're aware that there is some opposition to how you feel so now when you're playing off of it you're not really you know selling yourself out just for attention you're doing something that you actually believe in and then you're allowing some energy that foolish side based on whatever you believe in to actually help you and level up your attention be on the lookout for those workshops they'll be in the workshop area of brand man network other than that that's it so there we have it guys those are those gems from Sean and before we get out of here I want to make sure to add my two cents into it now the best example that I have personally of marketing controversy is for my client Nathan Faust who is a rapper out of Nashville Tennessee that I helped to go viral um, a couple of months back if you would like to know more about that I'll make sure to put a link to a video about it in the description below but pretty much a large part of his campaign was built around controversy the caption for the piece of content that we used for him at the time was school shooter of the rap game whose class am i in and of course of course 
This sparked debates and heated topics and heated fans getting at him in the comment sections of the content pages that we use. I mean, there were people really in these comments debating over gun control, debating over mass shootings, debating over things and things that were directly tied into the words that he said. And of course, not everyone loved what he had to say, but the controversy that came from that topic did bring people back to his profile. It gave people another reason to share the content outside of they liked the music or they liked what the actual piece of content was. And even bigger that came from it was a discussion was created around what he was putting out. It became less about the music, like I said, less about the content, and more about what the content and his ideas and his thoughts represented. Another thing that I learned from that situation is if you're going to dive into the controversy world, if you're going to use controversy to push yourself out, be prepared, be mentally prepared for the repercussion that's gonna come back because that is one thing that I have seen with people who take that route is they dive into it, they give all of these people these emotional triggers and then they can't handle when someone is deeming you hate mail or sending you angry emails or threatening you underneath your comments. So you have to know that controversy, when used correctly, can be a very, very effective marketing tool. It can create that discussion that you want. It can really push you out. We've seen it happen for artists big and small and in the middle. But like I said, be prepared for the consequences of what you're willing to stand by or be willing to stand by it no matter what the consequences are. Um, just put yourself in a safe space when dealing with the people who come as a recurrence of this. And you know, just make sure that you have an exit plan for it if things start to really go crazy. Now, if you would like to see videos like these and other exclusive content, make sure you go and check out the Brandman Network. I'll make sure to put a link to that in the description below as well. And as always, guys, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you guys to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey, and I'll see y'all next time. It's the network. <laughs>